Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Prashant from Leeds Quiet. So uh, today we are going to talk about uh, uh, implementing lead management best practices using Leeds Quiet. Uh, so as most of you know that Leeds Quiet is uh, uh, basically a marketing software that helps companies in capturing uh, and nurturing leads, managing the leads in one place and uh, you know, doing email marketing and creating landing pages. So today we'll be focusing just on lead management. Uh, we would not have enough time to talk about email campaigns or landing pages. So the agenda would be you know more about uh, uh, you know uh, deep diving into uh, managing the leads and understanding the, understanding the nitty gritties of leads. So having said that, uh, you know uh, before we begin the webinar, this is my brief profile. I am a co-founder and uh, chief customer officer of Lead Squared. And uh, before founding Lead Squared, uh, I was uh, working at Symphony Telica as the head of a business unit and before that I founded a company called Proteins which was into product engineering outsourcing and uh, I'm a graduate of IIT Delhi having degree uh, master's degree in mathematics and computer applications. So what you will learn from this uh, webinar today uh, so the key things are uh, how to uh, capture and manage all elites in one place uh, then how to manage your uh, business entities your uh, you know uh, the sales uh, and lead fields uh, you know, of your business with Lead Squad. Uh, then I'll be talking about the important attributes of the leads, uh, like uh, lead sources, uh, lead stages, uh, you know, lead scores, and lead uh, grades. Uh, I'll also show you examples of how to segment leads and what benefits. Uh, you know, I'll talk about what benefits you can achieve by segmenting. And then I'll show you how to uh, you know track how the lead is actually reacting. Uh, in response to your uh, marketing campaigns, so I uh, know how to track the lead activity and uh, how to make sense of that. And I'll also sh show you this feature of you know task and reminder. You know, so basically that gives the capability to inside sales team to create tasks and be reminded uh, about the leads, and uh, how to get more information about the lead, like social profile, in order to you know be more effective in uh, nurturing the leads. Uh, okay, so. Managing all leads in one place. So uh, basically, there are f you know four fundamental ways of capturing the leads uh, in Lead Squad. Uh, and uh, you know, if uh, you have already used Lead Squad, then uh, you would uh, you know probably understand it better. That uh, uh, you know you can manually add lead by using a quick add lead form and add new lead. You can import the leads using CSV. Uh, you can um, you know. Uh, if you already have some lead capture forms on your website, you can uh, connect that form using Lead Squad API or using uh, an iframe that we can provide by creating a landing page. Or you can, um, you know, capture the leads, uh, uh, you know, if you happen to use Outlook 2010 or 2013 and you can install our Outlook plugin that will give you capability to uh, capture a lead to whom you are sending email and, uh, you know, uh, capture a lead and, uh, you know, email activity. Uh, you know, from uh, for, from somebody, you know, from a lead uh, from whom you have received an email. So let me take you to Lead Squad instance and show you how exactly this happens. Uh, so before I do that, I had a quick poll in order to understand, you know, what is your current level of ex exposure to Lead Squad, so that I can whatever I talk about, you know, that I can, uh, you know, based on the profile of the audience, I'll I'll you know give the examples. Okay, so let me. Uh, uh, Go to Lead Squad instance that I have, uh, you know, uh, that is uh, that I'm displaying over here. I hope you are able to see it properly. Uh, so this is basically the Lead Squad screen that you see when you log in for the first time. So when your account is created, when you log in for the first time, you see this screen. So there is no data. So I, you know, deliberately created the instance so that you know you can relate to it. Uh, you know the people who have already you know logged in for the first time they can relate to it so you can see there is no data there is a you no know, quick bar around doing some settings you don't have to worry about that these settings can be done later also uh, so so there are there there is dashboard and I'll show you a dashboard with data also which will you know give you more sense so there are uh, you know marketing modules like email campaigns and create landing pages then there is lead management modules like you know manage leads and manage list and there is analytics, uh, you know, uh, which will which will tell you about uh, the website uh, visit report, traffic report, and lead source report. And then, in my account, you see you can see settings and help, uh, you know, documentation. So normally, one would start from uh, you know lead management. One would go to manage leads. 
so over here, uh, the ways you can uh, you know capture the lead. So there is quick add lead, you know, which will allow you to add a lead very quickly. So you can just uh, give uh, first name, last name, you know, email, phone number, etc., to cap and define the lead source. And there is add new lead, which will uh, where you can fill in more data. For example, if you want to you know uh, capture more details about the lead, like you know job title, job title level, etc., uh, lead owner. Uh, if you want uh, the lead not to be emailed, lead create, lead stage. I'll I'll talk about lead create stage etc. in bit detail, you know, later in this webinar. So this is uh, a form to add leads. Uh, then there is a way to import leads, so which will give you uh, capability to you know import uh, leads from a CSV. So normally, before using Lead Squad, you might be maintaining uh, leads in an Excel or CSV or some other software, or maybe in Outlook, and you can just export from that software or Outlook uh, in CSV and then import the leads over here. So let me give an example. Uh, so if uh, so, I prepared uh, some data for say a fictitious educational company. Uh, so for example, if this is the company, uh, you know, so they will be typically having uh, the lead fields like, say, student, uh, you know, first name, last name, uh, you know, email address, phone number, college, uh, highest degree, and assuming that this company basically is into the business of uh, educating uh, working professionals, they also would be capturing uh, the companies they are working at, their designation, you know, uh, the city they are in. Uh, you know, probably zip code and uh, their interest level. So, uh, interest level is basically indic indicator of you know their interest uh, in the uh, offerings of uh, this educational company. So, if this has to be mapped uh, with Lead Squad, if you want to capture this kind of uh, these kind of leads in Lead Squad, so you would uh, you know, notice that uh, some of the fields uh, you know are not present in the system. So, typically, any every business would have. Uh, you know, uh, uh, fields that may not be there, you know, may not be present in lead squad. So by default, uh, if you just, you know, look at the lead fields, so these are like uh, first name, last name, email, phone number, company, lead source, etc., etc. then company data, right, uh, company industry, employees, address, etc. then there are some additional fields. So the fields which are, uh, which a business wants to capture, for example, like highest degree, the college, it may not be there. But uh, uh, there is a way to capture these fields. So we have something called manage custom fields. If you go there, and uh, uh, this will give you a list of all the fields of lead that are supported. So there are 40 odd fields. You know, you can see uh, all of these over here. So there are 40 odd fields. Uh, you know, which are which are uh, supported. Uh, you know, by leads squad. Uh, you know, and you can create your own field. So let me you know, create uh, a field called college. So let's say college, and uh, the next thing it will ask you to describe which, in which section it should be. So remember this uh, manage leads. Let me go here again and uh, add new lead. So there are three sections of the lead: lead details, company, additional details. So here you have to specify in which section this field should be college field. So let's choose uh, lead details. Let's leave this field blank, data input type text, show a text box and max length of 256. Now there are some options. So if I select this one, this field will start appearing in um, uh, quick add lead. So this field will start appearing over here. Uh, if I select this one, this field will be you know used in import also. If I select uh, quick search, then you'll be able to search based on the college name you will be able to type the college name over here and would be able to find all the leads matching the college name right so let's create this field called college so it's created let me create another custom field called degree so if you notice in the in this excel sheet uh, the degree is uh, you no know, there are three degrees graduate postgraduate and uh, doctorate so Rather than creating a text field, I will create a drop down. So I will go there and I will say degree and uh, instead of text, let me select uh, no, a drop down. Drop down field is name, the name is select. You can, so it shows a drop down. You can add the, the degree name there. So you can say graduate.
postgraduate doctorate right so then you can again specify show in quickly quick add show in import uh, include in quick search and say save okay so now if you come to uh, you know manage leads if you say quick add lead you can see these fields are here so college is here and you know degrees here right if you go to add new lead you can see uh, again the college field and uh, degree field you know has been added so this is the way you can customize the lead fields in lead squared so that you can you know, add your own fields which are important for your business so you can add fields of type text of drop down of number you know so pretty much uh, everything a business uh, would uh, typically need uh, so having done that uh, this uh, customization let me now you know try to import this uh, uh, the csv so i'll go to import leads say select file and uh, so this is the file that I'm trying to import. It's a CSV file. I'll go to next. So now you can see uh, the mapping uh, from the CSV to lead squared. So these fields uh, which were sorted uh, by name, uh, by alphabet. Uh, so, so we try to map them by reading the column name. So city is mapped to city, college is mapped to college with the field we created. Designation could, could not be mapped because we don't have a field called designation, but we have something called title, job title. So you can select that. Email to email, highest degree to degree, interest score to lead score. So interest score, so there's a field called lead score, uh, which is correct mapping. Phone number to phone number, first name to first name, last name could not be mapped. So let me just map it. Working at, there is no field called working at in lead squared. So so that's the field where we are capturing the company of the student uh, so we will map it to field called company and then zip to zip so in case you don't want to map a particular field i mean you don't there is something in the csv which is not then a lead squared and you don't want to create it you can for example city you can just say you don't want to map it you can just unselect it right so you go to next and uh, uh, you can specify uh, options about duplicates whether you want to ignore the duplicates or override duplicates or update the duplicates uh, only empty fields of duplicates you can select who will be the owner of all these leads you know any lead squad user can be owner and you can say that all these leads you know just create a list of all these leads uh, say I mean list of all leads uh, imported on 6 June right I'll put the same thing in description and then uh, you can specify the source of uh, these leads for example if assuming all the leads uh, you know came through an inbound email so all these people actually sent an email with inquiry uh, to this educational company so I'll select inbound email and say next so your CSV is imported so 17 fields 17 leads are created now if you go to manage leads you can see all those uh, 17 leads uh, in the system so so you can see all the leads so so now you can see the grid view of the lead so this is the grid view and over here you can uh, uh, sort the leads you can uh, sort by name you know or by company or by lead score grade you know if grade is there so you, this is a sortable grid uh, so remember we made uh, the field uh, college and uh, you know uh, degree searchable so so we can search by say for example I want to have all the leads you know for with the colleges IIT right so I found it I can do that now I want to search all the leads uh, you know with the name say Prashant right so there's one lead with that name so you can search using the lead name company name you know and also if you have some custom fields and if you made them searchable you can search using those names so uh, that's allowed here if you want to uh, d do some advanced search, for example, uh, you can basically, you want all the leads with the lead score, say more than 10, right? So you can use advanced search. So you go here, uh, say, give me all the leads where lead score 
is more than 10. So you got this, right? So you can either, either search based on the data or based on the criteria and uh, you can quickly find uh, the leads that you're looking at. Multiple uh, things are supported in the grid itself to make it convenient for you to you know, engage with the leads. For example, if you want to say, uh, you know, send a quick one-to-one -one email to the lead. So you can do that from here. So this email, uh, you know, would be trackable email. You can use mail, mail merge fields uh, from here, you know. Uh, so for example, this field, uh, you can use that. Uh, so that's a quick way of sending emails. So you can send it to one person or if you want to say, select multiple people, you can use this option, send emails. So it will be sent to three people, but it will be one-to-one -one from, you know, Prashant Singh to Meenu, Prashant to Sudhakar, Prashant to Ashish. So that kind of email will go. If you want to export all the leads, you can do that. So if you say export, uh, the leads will be exported and you know you will receive uh, an email when the export is done. So you will, will have a link of CSV file, right? So you can work offline with that. You can filter the leads based on say, if you want to just have all the leads uh, with the lead source, uh, uh, you know, uh, right now all the leads have lead source uh, of uh, inbound email. So this uh, filter will not make sense. But if there were leads with multiple lead sources, you can filter in that. So bunch of options here and you can you know just play with them to explore. You can change the owner if you want somebody else to be lead owner, you can do that from here. So, so this is basically uh, you know uh, the way you can add leads and import leads and uh, uh, basically do basic lead customization and uh, you know, that will help you in managing all the leads in one place. So now I'll pause for some questions uh, and then I'll you know uh, proceed uh, uh, more in the uh, webinar. So uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, either type them in the question panel or uh, uh, just, just raise your hands. So there's a question from Arun in the question panel. Can we create a company name in uh, uh, quick uh, lead? Uh, Arun, so you want the company name in uh, quick lead ad, right? Yeah. So let me show you how it can be done. Yeah, let me show you how it can be done. So uh, let's go to custom fields. So there is already a field called company, right? You can just choose to edit it. And just say show in quick ad. Save. If you come to quick add lead and now you see company also, right? So that's the field. So does that answer your question Arun? Okay, I'm assuming I've answered Arun's question. Anybody? Uh, so there's a question from uh, Swati, what is iframe code? So Swati, I will, uh, when I uh, know show how to capture leads from form, I'll cover that. You know, I'll, I'll uh, so that will make it clear to you. Uh, there is a question on question panel. What is uh, lead grade uh, from Nishan? Nishan, just wait for a few minutes. I'm I'm going to cover that. Arun has Arun. Let me unmute Arun. I have unmuted you. You can go ahead and speak. I think you have something else to say. Uh, Arun, can you speak uh, using your mic? Well, probably you wanted me to show how to uh, add the company in quick uh, quick add lead. You know. So okay, let me do it again for you. So you go to this manage custom fields. You can go it from here from the lead page or you can go from settings also. So let me show you how to go from, so go to settings. Uh, if you scroll down in settings, you will see uh, manage custom fields. Go over here. So search for the field, uh, you know, uh, which you want to make say uh, appear in a quick ad lead. So this company, go to edit. and just uh, press this option show in quick ad so that will basically uh, add the field in the quick ad form all right so i'll i'll i think we are done with the questions uh, and i'll pause again after uh, you know 10 minutes and then you guys can ask uh, questions again so let me uh, uh, you know proceed uh, with the webinar so so what we s saw so far is uh, basically adding leads and uh, you know importing leads and customizing lead fields so I said in the beginning that you can also, uh, you know, add leads using lead captured forms and you can add leads using Outlook. So let me show you the example of Outlook. So 
So let me open my Outlook. I hope you can see that. So you see this uh, track and lead squared, this icon, it comes when you install our Outlook plugin. So if I receive an email, you know, from uh, uh, say I want to track an email from someone. So this email has come to me and uh, I just open this email and say that track and lead squared. So I can say a positive response to the email or negative or neutral response, right? So when I do this, this email, you know, you will get this, this email has been tracked uh, in lead squared, right? So now if you go to lead squared and see, uh, you know, in some time this uh, Dayanand Muniswami will start appearing as lead and this email will be tracked. So you can see Dayanand Muniswami, he has been added as a lead uh, in the system. And if you click on Dayanand, you'll be able to see that this email received with the subject, you know, this email uh, uh, was tracked, right? So this was the email. So whatever email that you receive, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, from any individual, you can track that individual and the email as a lead in lead squared, right? If you deploy Outlook plugin. Similarly, if you send an email, uh, you know, to someone. So I have created a test, uh, you know, ID test dot lead squared, say test and uh, just to make sure that you know it's not here already let me just uh, go to leads and see if there is already any lead with that ID so it's not there there's nothing right and I go here I will say test email and I'll using I'll use the send button of lead squared so it will come after a minute or two because my Outlook has uh, a rule that all the emails that I send, this they are delivered, uh, you know, with a delay of one minute, so that if I have made any mistake, I can correct it. So it will come after, you know, uh, a minute. Then it, when it comes, I'll show it to you. Uh, so that was uh, how you can uh, add, uh, you know, lead using Outlook uh, plugin. Uh, then another way is to, uh, you know, use your lead capture forms. So uh, let me show you how to quickly build a form and use that to capture leads. So for that you need to go to this landing pages and uh, you know say I'll quickly create a landing page capture leads let's say the name let's uh, since we are talking about education company let's say this is a template for education I'll select this one so there are a bunch of templates available you know for different industries education software travel so this is a template that I have so this is landing page designer where a company can insert the logo you know you can double click and uh, you know insert your logo you, this is an HTML editor where you can you know put pretty much any kind of HTML you know so uh, so let me just retain this template and only update this form so since we have added the two fields called college and uh, uh, degree so you know so this is the form so using this uh, you know uh, uh, form designer you can customize the form fields on this landing page you know so you can choose to have whatever fields sleep fields you want you have so for example I want to add college right so I'll say add college uh, I want to add degree as a field on the landing page I will add it so these are added I want to uh, you know make degree appear over above the college you know so I can do that uh, I want to have, if I want to have all the labels over the text text boxes, I can do that or on the left, right. I want to change uh, label to sign me up, I can do that. I want to change the button text color as red, you know, button color as uh, say something white. So all that, those are options are available, right. So once you do that, you can just say save and your form is, uh, you know, done. Now this form can be used on your website or in your uh, you know marketing campaigns to capture leads you can simply provide the link of the form once you're published so I'll show you how to publish so once you are once you design this form so by the way I mean I this session is not around landing pages but just to quickly you know show it to you so you can um, you know add you know HTML blocks for example uh, this is if you want to add more blocks you know you can add drag it to wherever you want resize it you know put the content double click put the content that's possible. Uh, if you uh, want to embed a YouTube video instead, for example, if I say don't want this particular uh, block and uh, instead I want to say 
embed uh, a media block, a YouTube video, you know, of uh, of my um, company. I can do that, right? So I'll just uh, say go to YouTube.com and uh, I'll I'll search for education. Right. So let's open this video, and I will. Uh, I can say just uh, copy embed code, and that's it. I'll just double click it. I'll put it here. And if you just preview, it will start appearing. It will start appearing. Right. So having done embedded the video, I'll 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 go to next step. So here I can specify, you know, what happens when uh, somebody submits on the form, gets a thank you message, or is redirected to a URL or downloads a document. So let's say we will contact you shortly, right? And I can configure an autoresponder to the lead who is submitting the form that we appreciate your interest. You know, we'll get back to you shortly. I can configure an uh, email notification to internal the person, you know, your marketer. And I can um, then assign all the leads from this form to somebody, add all the leads from in, from this form to a particular list. We created a list we are adding here. Increase leads code by a certain amount. So all these options are available. So let me move to next step. So again, I'm not spending a lot of time on landing pages because we'll have a separate session on that. So here you can specify the URL. You can specify any meta description, SEO behavior. Say next. And uh, review and publish so once you publish it will be published uh, with a certain URL so right now you see it's published with wowpages.co uh, you know for any company who's using lead squared it can appear in the company domain dot uh, you know whatever is the domain name for example if it's uh, say market expander then it can be market expander.com in that domain so now let me go to this page so we publish this page so So this is the page which is published on uh, HTTP and if I add any lead over here, it will start appearing, it will come here. So by the way, you can see that lead that I sent and uh, the email that I sent uh, to test.leadsquire that mail that has come. So you know this was, I, I, I sent a test email to show you that how to add leads uh, using Outlook. So it has come. So you can see that uh, you know a test email was sent by Prashant uh, Singh. Okay, coming back to this form, say, again, let me use my name, I say prashant.singh at leadsquare.com, graduate, postgraduate, phone number, and college, right? Thank you for interest and shortly you will see uh, this lead uh, over here in manage leads. So it will take uh, some time and you will I'll also receive uh, email notification. notification. I'll show it to you when it comes. Yeah, I'll show it to you when it comes. So in the meantime I can, um, uh, so I can show you some examples of uh, the lead capture forms our customers are using. For example, this crackitje.com. So, uh, you know, this is using, uh, they are using their own web page, but just the form. So they designed this form using our landing page module and they have used the iframe. So there was a question around iframe. So uh, I guess from Swati. So Swati iframe is, so when you, I just created a landing page, right? So this page uh, is a landing page. I designed using lead squared. So after designing, it will start appearing in over here. And uh, the pages that are published, if you just hover on that and say embed, so it will give you an iframe code. So this is the iframe code to embed. You can copy that and you can put that code, you know, over here in this page, like, you know, it has been put here. So then it will, uh, you know, start showing the landing page, uh, you know, in that space. So if it's a form, it will show the form. So that's the way to, you know, embed uh, a form to capture leads using iframe. Similarly, it can be also integrated using API. So one can just, uh, you know, uh, so this this is our API documentation, so which is basically a very simple API to capture leads. So one can just integrate uh, lead capture using the API uh, over here. 
uh, so let me just see if uh, the lead you know that I so it's captured let me go to manage leads right so you can see now Prashant Singh over here if you just click on Prashant Singh Prashant dot Singh at lead squared you know so this is and uh, so it's captured that I viewed a landing page which was a landing page you know I submitted the form the form data and uh, you know so, so there was an autoresponder that was sent I configured that thank you for interest it was sent to me right so all that is captured over here and same thing you will see that I, I would have received an email by now so so this is uh, an internal notification to me that uh, my landing page captured a lead you know, what was the name what was the IP address etc so all that is uh, here so so that's the quick uh, way of you know creating form and capturing the leads using uh, forms uh, so let me pause again for some questions if uh, there are and uh, then I'll uh, you know, move to the next uh, uh, piece of the webinar uh, so anybody has any questions you can again type them in the questions panel or uh, uh, you know just raise your hand okay, I can s so there's a question from Gaurav uh, we have seen iframe based forms taking some time to load at first time uh, so Gaurav let me show you this form so let's see let's reload it and see how it works it's taking few seconds more I mean yeah I think that's usual for iframe because uh, the forms are coming from a different source uh, so if that's a concern then you can use uh, uh, lead squad API or I mean the best way is actually to design the entire uh, page using as a landing page and then load that okay uh, there is a question by Javed what happens if same user fills two forms or so Javed I, I guess the question is that uh, if the same user uh, uh, fills the form same form twice is that correct is that the question Javed that the same user fills the form twice same form twice okay so if that happens then uh, the same lead will be updated so I can show it to you that uh, if I say so email ID is the primary key of the lead so if the same user fills the form second time with a different first name and different uh, uh, last name different data then uh, same lead will be updated with that data so after some time you'll see you know, that uh, the lead record is updated I'll show it to you uh, then uh, from Koteshwar there's a question how do we embed the code in a website so Kuteshwar, I mean you can if you just happen to see say uh, you know on this page if I say do inspect element so you'll be able to see an iframe code here somewhere here so you can see them extracting code basically you know this code is uh, to track uh, uh, the visits right so wherever you want to place the iframe you can embed so in the HTML you can embed that code as an iframe so that's the standard so for example if you want to embed say Google Maps also so you have to use iframe so it's similar to that the way you embed Google Maps you can embed uh, the lead squared form also okay uh, there's a question what are the limitations of the API as of now uh, so API uh, I mean you can create a lead uh, you know, pretty much uh, uh, you know with any kind of fields uh, so the way it works is that uh, you need to give a call to the API with a user ID and password and you will get a token then you have to use that token in making subsequent calls so you can uh, you know record uh, a lead uh, you know you can create a lead update a lead you know or search for leads with multiple criteria so right now we it, you can only capture leads so in the future we'll add uh, more APIs to say capture lead activity you know uh, and associated uh, details about the lead okay I can uh, see more questions so question by Swati tell me uh, okay how to import mails to lead squared so Swati you cannot import emails you can import contacts so what you can do is that uh, say from Outlook you can export all your contacts as CSV so 
and then import that, that CSV uh, in lead squared as leads. So you cannot import uh, emails, but you can import contacts. So does that answer your question, Swati? Just confirm on the question panel. Okay. Uh, do you have API integration to CMS like Drupal? No, Gaurav, we don't have integration with uh, CMS. We, I mean, our API is lead squared API using which one can create uh, leads within uh, lead squared. Uh, no, so we, we have not integrated with the other systems. Archit has a question, is there any particular format for uploading CSV file lead squared? So Archit, CSV is the format. CSV is comma separate value file and uh, you know, so you, what you need to have uh, is uh, basically columns like this that you should have columns defined and there should be data and uh, you know uh, that's it and then you should you you, are, you would be able to map the fields uh, you know with lead squared so uh, it just need to be comma separated value file with uh, defined column names okay all right so let me move I think there are let me see if anybody has raised hand if anybody wants to speak up please uh, you know go ahead and raise your hand all right okay so let me uh, move ahead uh, okay so let me go back to the presentation uh, right so we were at uh, you know this slide and then we went to lead square to see a number of examples of how we can add leads uh, now let me uh, go to the next slide uh, so I think I already showed you how to search leads and how to do advanced search quick actions uh, export leads I showed you that you know once you export leads you will receive uh, notification so let me so I exported the leads there should have been a notification for me so that uh, oh I think yeah this is the one so you see this uh, we have completed your request to export leads so you can just uh, right click this and you know or click this and this will uh, download all the leads so like this you know it will just download uh, all, all your leads so this is the CSV exported from lead squared. Okay, again going back to presentation. Uh, now let's just see how to segment. So once you have leads, then how to you know segment and build lists. So let me again uh, you know, go to browser and show you how to do that. Uh, so we, once you have leads, uh, typically you would want to group the leads based on you know, similar criteria. So for that there is list management. So you go over here and uh, uh, you can um, so this this list you see this we created when we imported so you see all the list leads that were imported right so you can see all the leads there in the list so you can build your own list by you know uh, just let's just go back and uh, create a new list so this is a list building tool so you can specify you know what is the criteria for example if I just say that give me all the let me create a list of uh, uh, you know, uh, people where the uh, say college uh, say contains IT and uh, lead score uh, is more than say ten. So let's search. So we get four leads, and then um, we can save that as a static list or a dynamic list. So the static list, uh, basically if you save a static list, so these four leads will be part of the list and it will not change unless you change it manually. If you save as dynamic list, uh, what will happen is that if there is a future lead, lead that gets added in future, which matches this criteria, it will be automatically added to the list. Right? So it's basically like saving a query. So you would not have to worry about uh, adding uh, the list, be, you know, matching certain criteria. Uh, adding a lead matching certain criteria to a list. Okay, so let's uh, save it. Right, and if we happen to add a lead which you know matches uh, this uh, criteria, so that will be automatically added to the list. So, so you can you can you know create list on any criteria. So it's a pretty powerful tool. You can you know build complex queries, specify criteria, multiple criteria, and you know keep keep adding any adding, adding lists. So this is, you know, uh, a simple way of uh, creating a, a list and segmenting list uh, leads based on a given criteria. And I'll talk about some advanced scenarios uh, later in the presentation. Let me again go back to the PPT and, uh, uh, you know, take you uh, to the future uh, slides. So uh, having covered uh, lead capture, basically lead addition and list creation, 
let's talk about uh, some important in fact very important attributes of the lead so there are four lead source lead score lead stage and lead grade let me talk about each of them so lead source is uh, basically uh, the point of lead origination basically the place where the lead was you know before it got captured in uh, lead squad so some lead sources we are able to track automatically and some have to be tracked manually so for example if a lead is uh, coming from uh, you know uh, through direct traffic or organic search or pay per click ads or social media referral sites email marketing we can track them automatically but if a lead is basically making you a call an inbound call or you are making a call to a lead or if you meet somebody in trade show and you know you want to capture that person as a lead or if an employer refers or a customer refers so these leads will be typically added manually and you have to associate the score manually so uh, uh, so let me uh, show you you know these uh, the uh, the lead uh, source management within lead squad how it happens so let's go to settings so you can see uh, lead source management so so you will see a bunch of lead sources already configured like organic search referral sites direct traffic social media so whatever is in gray is tracked automatically whatever is in white background you know uh, is tracked manually so let me explain each of these so organic search means that uh, you know uh, so if the person was searching on a search engine like google or bing before the lead was captured so that the lead the origin of the lead was you know a search engine uh, or search result of search, search engine referral site means that uh, your website link or lead capture link cause was, was there on some page and from there the lead actually originated direct traffic means that somebody directly typed the url of uh, your you know website or landing page uh, in the browser social media i think you know that uh, you know it means that the lead has actually uh, clicked the link while it was on facebook or twitter or uh, you know linkedin inbound email means the lead has you know sent you an email inbound phone call outbound phone call i think that's obvious pay per click ad means uh, uh you know you were running an ad uh, say on google and uh, somebody clicked on it and came to your landing page and then submitted the details trade show customer referral partner referral employee referral those are i think obvious so these are lead sources which are configured uh, you know within lead squad but if you happen to have your own lead source you know so so for example in case of uh, you know uh, 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 an education company it might be refer from a student right so you can add that uh, lead you you know just add that and save and uh, the lead sources will start uh, reflecting this particular lead source and uh, uh, so if you go to manage leads let me open in a different uh, tab so you can um, if i want to say change uh, source of say this particular lead i'll just go over here in the lead source no i'll i'll i can just say student referral right so whatever custom lead source i created that will be reflected uh, to this lead so uh, so that's about lead source management so you can pretty much you know add uh, any of your lead sources and associate the the leads uh, you know with those lead sources and uh, after after a while i'll show you some live data you know from our own instance of lead squared here you will see leads from different sources so that will give you more insights about how lead sources are relevant and important then uh, there is uh, lead score so typically uh, the life cycle of a lead is you know like this that uh, you know the lead is created uh, you do an email campaign the lead opens the email the lead probably clicks a link in the email it comes to your website and sees certain pages uh, it may come to a landing page and submit you may have a phone call you may have a demo and it might sign up for your product or service right so each of these activities is important but uh, the weightage of these activities may be different for example email open may not be as important as you know web page visit because email open does not uh, you it doesn't mean that uh, the person is interested in your marketing your you know product or service if the person is coming to your website again and again probably that is more important right so what in within lead squared you can actually associate weightage to each of these activities and as and when these happen uh you know the i score will keep adding to the lead right so you will know that uh, a lead is getting engaged and uh, among all the leads that you have you will be able to figure out uh, the leads which are most engaged by filtering uh, based on score so for example you can associate uh, say a score 
like this, you know, for a five for email open, you know, 10 for link click, 10 for web page visit, you know, 25 for submission. So look at uh, the second row in the numbers. So initially the score was zero, email open score became five, link click score became 15, then again web page visit score became, you know, 25. So as and when these activities happen, your score will keep increasing and you will have a lead with score of 675. So this lead will be more important to you than all the leads uh, which probably have a score uh, say 100 or 200, right? So lead score is a way of uh, measuring the lead activity and then uh, it can give you insight about which are the hot leads among all the leads which are actually most engaged and which are the hot leads. So let's come to lead score again and see you know how lead scoring uh, happens. So you go to lead score setting. So here you see you know pre-configured uh, lead activities. So there are some scores already assigned. For example, email open, link clicked, etc., etc. You can simply edit. You know, if you want to change the score, you can change the score over here. I, for example, email open is is not very important for me. I will just say score of five, right? Uh, web page visit is more important for me. I'll probably say a score of say twenty. So I can do that. I'll just save it. If there are activities which are you know, kind of offline, for example, which are not uh, online activities, then you can add them also. You can say that there is a lead activity, custom activity. For example, you know, visited you know booth in the trade show, right? Had a phone conversation. So these are custom activities. So with the lead, uh, you can associate them manually. So let me show you that, for example, this lead like so you see there is a lead score of 50 already and if I had uh, so he viewed landing page submitted so his score became 50 if I had uh, you know a, a positive phone call I'll add notable activity so phone call say phone conversation and we can add that right so the lead, uh, you know, lead will have uh, lead, lead will get additional uh, score, uh, you know, with this uh, uh, with this activity. So the so you can add any kind of activity, you know, had a phone call or met in trade show or you know any other activity and associate that manually with the lead. And then once you have uh, uh, a number of leads with the activity, then you can filter, uh, you know, based on the lead score. So you can probably focus on all the leads having a score of more than hundred you know, or all the reads having a score of more than 200. For example, by adding that activity, the score became 100, right? So, and uh, among all these leads, I'll probably focus on, on the leads which probably have a score of more than 50. So it depends upon your business, you know, what weightage you want to associate with individual lead activity and you can filter based on that. So that's the concept of uh, lead scoring. Uh, then there is a concept of uh, lead stage. So uh, uh, in each business, uh, uh, so Typically, you will classify leads based on you know where they are in the sales funnel. So, initially, they may be contact, you know, just say all all names. They may become prospect, or marketing qualified lead, or hot lead opportunity. So, uh, you can actually group leads in stages. So that helps you in running marketing offers. For example, if a lead is at prospect stage, then uh, probably educational email cam campaigns will make more sense than offering uh, you know uh, information about the discounts that you are giving. Right, and if lead is uh, say uh, in MQL or opportunity, probably sharing, uh, you know, case studies will make more sense than just uh, sharing educational content. Right, so staging gives you a way of grouping leads uh, and running marketing offers corresponding uh, to the needs of the stage. Again, if you just see uh, lead squared, you can do lead stage management. So by default, we have three stages configured. Uh, prospect opportunity customer you can add your own stage you know so the stage will be before customer because once uh, somebody becomes customer you know uh, there is no further stage right so so then then probably you will track uh, the lead in C as the thing something like CRM right so you can add your own stage uh, then there is a concept of lead grade so lead grade is uh, nothing but uh, the fitment of the lead with your ideal customer profile so typically a business would be defining a customer profile that is ideal right so I have taken example of a software business so the ideal customer profile may be a company with 5 to 25 million dollar revenue with uh, 50 to 250 number of employees percent is spent on software like 10 percent industry logistics blah blah right 
and uh, in that company what uh, titles are relevant for your product or service you know like VP professional services so that's the profile that a you know a company needs to uh, you know define what what is my ideal customer and then the leads who are matching like more than 90 percent with the profile they would be lead grade A between 75 and 90 percent B is 50 to 75 C and others D right so this is a way of uh, uh, basically defining the quality of the lead or the grade of the lead and uh, once you've defined that you can manually associate uh, that grade with the lead so if I again go to lead squared if uh, say I want to say edit lead so here I can uh, choose a lead grade grade A and also you know if I do customization of lead stage I can choose that from here so what is the lead stage and I can save that so these are uh, you know some important concepts about uh, you know uh, basically which will help you in understanding the lead better so uh, once you understand uh, the lead uh, uh, you know uh, score and grade and stage then you can really get a sense of lead and we call that lead pulse that's a theoretical concept you know basically uh, a view of lead uh, you know uh, through grade score and stage so the first the most important thing in stage because the deeper the lead is in the sales stage, uh, you know, the more important it's for you. For example, a lead which is an opportunity uh, is more important than a lead, you know, which is uh, just in the you know, prospect stage. Uh, and then the quality of lead is important, you know, what is the grade of the lead and then the score. So the leads which are deeper in the stage, leads which we have that have, you know, better grade. So there then you can compare them with score, right? So then you can differentiate uh, among those leads uh, with the score. So whichever has highest score with, you know, it's... Uh, or high score means that you know they are more engaged with your product or service right so let me pause again for some questions and then I will uh, you know uh, run through other slides I think we are already running uh, out of time so uh, I request uh, you you to be you know uh, in the webinar for a few more minutes I'll try to wrap it up uh, very quickly after I finish this round of questions so please go ahead and raise your questions okay so uh, uh, Mr. Koteshwar has a question. Do you have any lead qualification criteria like band scoring? So Koteshwar band scoring, uh, you know, uh, so that's like budget uh, authority, you know, need and timeline, right? So based on that only you uh, typically uh, associate the stage of the lead, uh, you know, uh, so the lead stage is uh, a function of uh, where the lead is falling in context of band. So it does not happen automatically. So we don't have uh, a rule of formula right uh, to uh, as to basically associate a stage based on band so it's based on the interaction of the sales rep or the marketing person with the lead uh, there is one more question can I create audience segment on the basis of the content they are uh, reading and assign them score yes yeah, so Gaurav what you can do is that uh, uh, so if uh, if people are downloading say a white paper through a landing page and when you create a landing page you can associate uh, the score uh, you want to increase after a person submits on the landing page so a person would be giving the information submitting and after that downloading so in that case you can uh, the lead score will be automatically uh, increased you know based on the submit event right so that can be used to, to uh, uh, you know associate score uh, based on certain activities of the lead so what categories you are referring to Goro? I mean if you can just speak up and uh, so that I can understand your questions question quickly I'll unmute you hey Goro, you can speak uh, now yeah Yes. Yeah, I can. I, I I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, I can hear. Go ahead. Perfect. So, you know, what my question was, uh, I need to know. So there are multiple kind of people who are looking for. You know, some some would be coming up and looking for services which is a very small value, of a very small ticket value, and you know, person who would be coming around and looking for a service which is of a high value for me. How do uh, now? This can be. You know, okay, so I can I, I do understand that you know on the basis of uh, uh, different white papers I can define different scores, mm -hmm. but still that doesn't give me a, a you know a segmented audience or segmented leads on what who I mean even even the score might be a little similar you know on the basis of if a guy who's looking for a smaller service reads a lot of pages you know and downloads a couple of white paper, uh, but might might not be a relevant guy. Uh, who uh, relevant lead to me, but a guy who is looking at five articles and you know uh, downloads a white paper which is of a high value service mm -hmm. that might be a very relevant lead to me. So you know that, that yes. How, how do I do? Do you do you get my question right? I, you, 
Yeah, I, 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 I think I broadly understand it. So, Gaurav, what will happen is that if somebody is uh, visiting your pages again and again, right? Uh, so, so if a guy who is visiting five pages of your website, right, or if he visits one page five times uh, in a, uh, you know, in a, uh, in a span of one day or few days, right, his lead score will be higher than a guy who is visiting only two pages, right? So, uh, yeah. the score will be higher and. Uh, Secondly, uh, based on, so if you have say different marketing offers, right, and you want to uh, differentiate, uh, you know, uh, among the people, you know, differentiate uh, within the level of interest. So what you can do, you can create say different kind of landing pages. So one, so landing page need not be only to download, uh, you know, uh, download the white paper. Landing page can also be to make uh, uh, the lead aware about your marketing offer and, uh, you know, get uh, submission from the lead uh, uh, you know, so that you can share more info information about that marketing offer, and you can have mul different uh, lead scores for each of the landing page, right? So, if there is a landing page to download a white paper, you can have a score of 50. If there is a landing page to sign up for a webinar, you know, there could be a score of say 100, right? So, uh, uh, using that, you can uh, 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 basically differentiate or categorize uh, within the level of interest that the leads may have. Uh, if you are looking for uh, uh, lead scoring based on which page the person is visiting on your website, right? If you're looking for mm -hmm. that, that is not possible at this point of time. So all pages on the website uh, will be equal. The only exception will be the landing pages where you can create associate custom scores. Okay, got that, got that, thanks. Okay. Uh, so there is a question by Mr. Javed. Uh, can we see what a specific lead is doing on our site such as a uh, log of pages uh, where they visit. Yes, yes, uh, Javed. Uh, I will show it to you. I will show you live data in, in some time. Uh, any other question? Okay, so there is one question. Uh, if an e one link in the email is clicked multiple times, uh, yes, so Nishant, the lead score will be added uh, uh, you know, again and again because what may happen is that the link is, if I receive an email, I may click a link now, right? And uh, uh, then I get distracted uh, you know, with some work. I again come back and again click the link, right? Uh, so, uh, which means that I have more interest and I make uh, tomorrow again click the link uh, because I need to know more about it, right? So, the lead score will increase. So, to uh, what you can do uh, if uh, the lead scoring becomes, uh, uh, you know, a uh, little difficult because, uh, you know, somebody may be clicking the links again and again, then you can associate lower lead score so that it does not distort our data. Okay, let me move to the presentation again. So lead segmentation, I gave you an example, brief example, uh, you know, in the beginning of the presentation. So segmentation is using lead squared, you can segment the leads based on who they are and what they are doing. So based on their demographic information and also based on what, uh, you know, how they are reacting to your marketing offers. Uh, so let me just uh, show you some advanced examples. Uh, so now I will, uh, so, so far I, I was using a, a clean instance of lead squared, this one. Now I will show you uh, instance with live data, which is, uh, you know, our own instance of lead squared. So this is lead squared uh, being used by lead squared. You can see, you know, dashboard with a lot of data, you know, uh, different uh, 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 charts and uh, tables. Uh, let me go to lead segmentation. So. I'll go over here and suppose I want to I want to have all the leads you know all the CXOs that opened a particular email campaign that I did right and uh, have been engaged with marketing promotions which means have some uh, level of uh, lead scoring so how I can do that so I'll say create a list right I will say give me all the leads where the job title level is C level, CXO level, okay. Then I will also add, uh, you know, uh, one more criteria. Who opened a particular email campaign and which was the email campaign? So, for example, this newsletter that we sent, uh, right? Let's refine it. 90. And also have some lead score. Say, lead score is more than. 50, right? So the 18 leads. Now I can save that as a, as a dynamic list, right? A list is created. 
another example very quickly you know all leads who have signed up you know from landing page and ha have signed up for the product demo right so i'll go over here so all the leads who have probably come from a particular landing page say where the landing page is right and where the lead uh, stage let's go to lead stage is so we have customized the lead stage for ourselves you can see prospect signed up for demo demo happened free trial opportunity disqualified invalid unreachable customer right so i will say sign for demo so i have these five leads right so you can basically i mean whatever criteria you specify you know you can create uh, so uh, if there are more leads meeting this criteria in the future they will be automatically associated with the list so segmentation is a beautiful thing it, it's very useful you know you can get uh, you will exactly know, you know which are the leads uh, whom you want to target for a particular market marketing campaign and you know i encourage all of you to play with that so i'll not take more time on segmentation i'll move to the next uh, topic so some uh, real example of uh, lead capture using landing pages so and then i will uh, show you you know how the lead activity etc is getting tracked right so let me uh, go to uh, browser again and uh, uh, sorry this let me go to browser and uh, so if you go to google and search for lead management system you will uh, normally find an ad from lead squared so this is the lead squared ad right so you click on the ad you will land on this landing page so this is a landing page which is there in production you submit your information say so email let me uh, give an email say which probably should not be there right so this is live uh, you no know, data so i say sign up and uh, this is a thank you page i'm redirected to so in some time i'll be able to see that lead uh, over here so when it comes i'll show it to you uh, so n now let me just uh, uh, you know, show you deep dive into leads and show you how you know what kind of tracking is uh, possible right so let me take any any lead over here so this lead has you know if you just notice the name company name the source is social media the lead owner lead age and you see all the all the activity history of the lead that timeline view of the lead so javed the, you know to answer your question you can so once the lead is created basically once somebody opens an email or once somebody submits on a landing page after that we'll be able to track uh, you know the entire interaction of that lead uh, with with your website you know so if they come to the landing page our landing page we are able to track that and the lead score is added uh, you know if they submit on the landing page the data is track, uh, tracked and uh, you know lead score is added uh, if we send an email campaign uh, using lead squared that's tracked right uh, this is a manual uh, change that nilesh has has a neutral phone call right so so you you will be you can see the you know entire history of interaction with the lead so whether manual or uh, automatic right so let's uh, go back uh, so you can see this lead has come now so prashant test webinar lead score it has come right so there there was a lead score of 14 that was associated with the landing page so that's why lead score of 14 so i you know came I spent one second on the landing page you know submitted on the form view landing page again you know converted to lead etc so all this is there i can see the lead details so you know lead details if there is social profile available of the lead you will be able to see that so it's not there for my this particular id of mine but i'll show you some leads you know of whose social profile you can see you can add tasks if you uh, no you can create uh, tasks for the lead so if you have to follow up for example i know this lead is some somebody on landing page so you can create a task you know choose a date choose a time choose when you are going to be reminded you know and this is also possible through sms you know with a separate integration that we have so that's possible so you can create multiple tasks say for tomorrow also 
and whenever these tasks are due you will be able to see them here this is a task panel so you know you'll be able to see which are the tasks associated with you which are the pending tasks so this is a task bar for individual so you can see that here uh, you can also add uh, notes if uh, you know if you want to add notes about the lead uh, anything any anything random right so you can add that you can add a notable activity if you want you know whether you had uh, say if you left a voicemail you can add that so multiple things you can do with the lead right you can see you know of which list the lead is part of so this is not associated in list you can see the activity summary right so let me show you a lead which may have a lot of data. Let me uh, so just sort out our leads using lead score and I will choose uh, the one with the highest lead score. Say this one. So you can see a lot of activities you know. So he spent 14, he uh, no, uh, 39 seconds uh, per page 40, 14 page visits you know phone calls were there form submissions emails were opened you know you can see he's member of multiple list no notes associated no tasks for him social profile if that is available let's see yeah you can see uh, the picture you can see uh, uh, this is the gravatar profile of the person right you can see the lead details the activity history right so that is there so by the way there is uh, you know uh, so lead sources I you know I cover lead sources uh, to get a um, you know better sense of lead source you can uh, go to analytics and uh, you know go to lead source report so you'll exactly know you know how many leads are coming from its sources for example if I want to say drill down in social media so if I want to know, know how many leads have come from mobile Facebook so these are all the leads. So if I just select the lead uh, in the lead details, the source is social media, and it will tell you, telling you, you know, mobile, Facebook, right? Similarly, if I want to see how my uh, uh, you know ads are running, PPC ads. So if I go to say pay per click ads and say select. Uh, lead lead details it's telling me PPC ads is AdWord which means Google right open source lead management system so this is the name of that that we have given AdWord and this is the name of the landing page or the campaign name right so you can uh, get this kind of uh, tracking and you can see also see the entire activity history whatever he has done viewed pages or you know open emails or you know submitted on the landing page so that data is uh, captured. Uh, let me just come back again to the presentation. So, so tracking happens when you deploy a tracking script on the website to track. So if you just go to lead squared and uh, you know uh, there is a tracking script in settings. So, so this one you need to put on all pages of the website uh, then only tracking happens. Uh, then you can track if the lead opened email, if they clicked link in the email, if they visited the website, if they submit on the form. You can track offline interaction. You can change. You can uh, track change in the lead stage, lead ownership. Check the social profile. Create task and reminders. Right. So, okay, that was the last slide. And uh, uh, let me again uh, open uh, this webinar for questions, and uh, then then we can uh, you know uh, conclude. So let me again uh, go to question panel. Uh, in the meantime, you can probably read this uh, ode or poem. So go ahead and ask your questions. I'll I'll answer uh, you know, each of them. You can raise hand also. Can I migrate data from my current CRM? If yes, uh, how? Okay. So Gaurav, you can uh, export the data from your uh, CRM using a CSV and then import it. So you can uh, basically export the lead data and then import uh, the lead data into Reach Squared. Uh, Koteshwar, you are asking, can we target versus actual activity? I did not get you, Koteshwar. Can you repeat the question? Okay, sorry. I think you have added more. Like revenue orders, hot leads, uh, uh, target versus actual. 
so what you can do koteshwar you can basically create uh, lead fields called target and you know say target revenue and actual revenue you can uh, you know uh, target order or actual order and you can put the data there so that's the way you can uh, achieve this so we we don't have a default way of doing this you will have to create custom fields uh so there's a question by gaurav do you plan to integrate with mailchimp and go to webinar we plan to integrate with go to webinar that integration will uh, happen very shortly uh, i think uh, in next uh, you know 2 to 4 weeks that will be available with mailchimp uh, so the way we uh, you know uh, use uh, provide our email campaigns and i could not show you our email campaigns module today so we use uh, you know the underlying platform mailchimp called mandrel and also that of amazon and also that of sendgrid to send emails so that integration is already there but as to do email campaigns uh, we don't plan to integrate so for example uh, if you have to do email campaigns uh, when you subscribe to lead squad you will have to use lead squad so we will not uh, 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 no integrate with mailchimp in that context uh so goro there was another question i want to track leads which are generated uh, to uh, from an offline event so can i get a lead from an event and send an email from lead squad so that he can be tracked by cookie hey goro can you can you speak your question can you so let yeah. me try you know okay so what i'm what i'm saying right now you know as a solution uh -huh. is uh, you know the, if i get a, if i send a, if i put input a email on the lead squad right now okay mm -hmm. and if you allow me uh, to send me a email to that person mm -hmm. to to know that that particular lead which okay. which i have generated offline okay this guy can get a get a email you know click on a link mm -hmm. and once he click on a link he come back to my website okay now since you know that uh, you know this guy is actually coming to my website from a particular link mm -hmm. which i which he has clicked okay you can say okay this is already a lead which is generated and let's track him to that particular email email id so you track his ip or his cookie and you you know club it with the with the email that i have provided already in the system to you do you get me yes yeah, so i think that's what we do so uh, basically when you send the email campaign so basically you have to create uh, the lead within lead squad right then you add the lead uh, in in a list and you do an email campaign and whatever link that you embed if the guy is tracking so uh, if the guy is clicking that link oh. so whatever cookie is there i that will be basically uh, you know using the that email id you know to to which the email was sent okay, and okay. then i'm then, so, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry i never I'm, yeah i'm yeah, i'm sorry I never used your email campaign okay that okay yeah so i could not uh, you know so, give the demo yeah, so it, that that's how it happens yeah okay okay so if i if i'm sending a email campaign mm -hmm. uh, um you know the person need not to come to my site and uh, you know submit the information you know that information is already there right right or submit a contact form okay okay got that got that yeah that's correct yes uh so there is a question uh, let me see if any other question if i have missed any question from anybody please uh, you know uh, type it again i might have missed you know uh, there have been so many questions so if anybody wants to uh, raise a hand to ask a question or type again please please feel free to do so and thanks rob for your comments i appreciate your comments uh, it's pleasure yeah thank you yeah Okay, there's a question from uh, Nishant. How do we tag uh, Lead Squad with Outlook? Uh, uh, so Nishant, there is a plugin that you need to install. So when you use Lead Squad, if you go to settings, uh, there is a you know, connector setting. If you go there, you'll be able to download the plugin. I can sh quickly show it to you also. So if you go to this page, connectors, and uh, here you can uh, you know uh, see the plugin that you can download. Uh, any other questions? i guess not so uh, i'll i'll then close this uh, webinar thank you uh, for uh, your time your patience i think we ran half an hour more than the scheduled time but uh, most of you have stayed you no know, thanks a lot uh, really appreciate your time and attention and looking forward uh, uh, to all of you uh, using lead squad and giving us a lot of feedback to make it a great product thanks all uh, have a good day and good week bye bye thanks for sure thanks a lot yeah.